inside the homes of Karl Lagerfeld. Haute Couture fashion designer Karl Lagerfeld is best known for being the creative directors at Chanel and Fendi. He went on to restore the brands to their former glory while making them marketable in the latter part of the 20th century. He was a grand success and an influential icon of the fashion industry for the majority of his life. It was Karl who said, dresses are only interesting as part of everything else that's going on. So it is no wonder then that he shared a lifelong passion for interior design, owning over 20 homes during his lifetime. No two were alike and expressed the very vision inside his genius mind. First, we'll be visiting his 1970s Parisian Art Deco apartment. It was here that he filtered the jazz age through a 1970s lens. The home housed his collection of 1920s furniture and masterpieces. His shell sofa, armchairs, and poof, all done in a heavy ivory satin and gold lacquer, were from a house designed by Elsie de Wolf around 1930. The lacquered screen was by Eileen Gray from 1924. The painting and two vases, all in silver bronze and black lacquer, were by Jean Donad from 1928. His stainless steel bed was by Prince and covered in red rust linens. The mirror was designed by Gru, the brother-in-law of couturier Paul Poiret. The floors were either black or dark brown, and it was Carl who stated they show off my art deco pieces like diamonds on a Cartier showcase. Next up is his Monte Carlo apartment Described as being a palace for a child, the home is filled with colorful gaudiness done in the Memphis style. The candy-colored toy-like furnishings appear to be out of a cartoon. In his bedroom, the wardrobe, like that of a giant jack-in-the-box for clothes, had a glass door and plastic laminated wood. The home was exquisitely finished in post-modernism furnishings. It was here that Carl's imagination could truly run wild like being in a comic book. There were no strict boundaries when it came to the design of this childlike home. Lagerfeld felt the most at home in the 18th century. He stated, it was the most polite century and it was perfect. The rooms were so flattering to live in. And so they were, in his apartment that is. It was in this home that he preferred candlelight over electricity, walked on a rug that belonged to Louis XV, and ate off of myosin plates, even when it was just him. In the gallery, the dining table was covered in a Venetian lace tablecloth, surrounded by chairs in the Louis XV style, covered in scarlet linens. The room also housed a painting of a scene from the life of Christ, that was once hung in Marie de Medici's private chapel. Carl's 18th century bedroom featured a bed designed by Suni, where he recreated the Bildikin of extravaganza, consisting of hand-woven brocade, ostrich plumes, and bird-of-paradise feathers. It was in this home that he embraced French 18th century sumptuous luxury, seated under a bronze statue that was commissioned for Catherine the Great. He certainly knew how to live the good life. Carl's home in Le Mie was said to be one of his coziest, encompassing warm tones, natural woods, and playful fabrics. The home perfectly melded masculine and feminine styles together. His Salon de Tea contains a suit of Gustave III painted wood and cane furniture. The plaster mirror is by Christian Bernard, and the cast iron armchair is by Poularat. The bedroom features an 18th century pattern from Le Mecou, which surrounds the room in its draperies, wallpaper, fabric coverings, and bedding. The ground floor's sitting room was inspired by early 20th century French fashion illustrations on the decorative arts. And the striped sofa and chairs are by fashion designer Paul Poiret's Atelier Martin. Carl also purchased a hotel particulier on the left bank in Paris. 
The Grand Salon featured rare boiserie panels that were original and exceptionally large mirrors that covered the walls. Military symbols in the gilding added in 1730 do indicate that the room was redesigned by the owner, who was an officer in the army. The sculptural elements of the room were designed by a man who decorated the apartments of Louis XV and Madame du Pompadour. The home expressed Carl's masterful eye for interior design and appreciation for historical relics. In 1992, Carl stated, My dream is to one day build a very modern house. I don't know why, because I have enough houses already, but I dream of it. And 16 years later, that vision of his was realized. In the main living room, frosted glass panels cover the bookcases. When the glass panels swivel open, the books, which are a very small sampling of Carl's library, are on view. In his bedroom, white lace and crochet duvets cover the bed, and one can notice a flat screen TV visible through a glass wall. The entire home fits the theme of a futuristic spaceship-like home, where everything is sleek, minimal, crisp, and clean. There is no messy surface, but only minimal elements and a muted color palette. Lagerfeld occupied Villa Franco between 1991 and 1998, located in Hamburg, Alemany, Germany. It was a 12,000 square feet single-story home built in the 1920s. The lounge area spans the entire length of the building and boasts a beautiful coffered and painted ceiling. Carl expressed his tastes magnificently in this home, emphasizing the art deco bones of this extraordinary villa. Carl's waterfront Monaco mansion was gifted to him by Prince Rene in 1986. He rescued and restored the home, spending an estimated 14 million, turning the building into a luxurious home fit for royalty. He converted the mansion's three sitting rooms into a single ballroom and added art from the world's leading artists. In every room, modern, colorful elements were put together in a unique fashion to create a gorgeous environment. Today, the home is used as a luxurious hotel, which can be seen by the simplistic interiors of the bedrooms. And one has to admit that the views are practically unbeatable. Although we did not get to visit every single home that Carl had, let me know in the comments down below which one was your favorite from those that we visited. Can't wait to see you in the next video.